What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, supposedly this month, Brian, he is going to be unveiling some of their plan for the next, what, three to four years, something like that. And so we're going to discuss what James Gunn may unveil, what we think he should unveil, or what we think is a good idea to unveil, and sort of discuss what the future of DCU may look like. So Brian, um, we're guessing that he's going to probably be unveiling about three or four films. Warner Brothers also has an earnings call coming up. Would not surprise me if you see some sort of synchronization between the corporate kind of public entity speaking to some of this and then James Gunn himself kind of unveiling things in a more fan friendly way alongside that. So keep an eye out for that. That should be later in the month. What I am envisioning is if you remember like when Kevin Feige goes to like a D23 or to San Diego Comic Con and they put up that graphic on the screen that has the timeline and then they kind of fill in the projects, but then they leave slots open. That's what I have in mind that you might get some things that are longer range, but they're just letting you get excited about letting you know that we're committing to this path, this character, this idea, even if they won't give you a specific timeline on everything. So I wouldn't look at it as a sequential plan. I would look at it as these are the initial choices that they're choosing to put in front of the audience that they want to bet on. And I think there's some stuff that probably is less topical to what you and I talk about, but I think will be relevant, which is they've promised something that spans and connects the multiple media. So don't be surprised if you see you know, this stuff that should cover like streaming, video games, the actual comics themselves. It's like ambitious, Brian. I think there'll be I think there'll be something for everyone in this unveiling. I don't think it's just movies. But that's obviously what we'll and, and movies and series are what we'll spend the most time talking about. We already know Superman is one of those things. Young Superman is one of those things. I would expect the way Gunn has positioned this he will give you more nuggets about what exactly that means, what storylines might be adapted for this, mm -hmm. what other characters might be brought into this initial run, this initial story he wants to tell. So I think that's the Superman angle of this since he's already given you some of the initial information there. Given that you know it's young Superman, and you and yet you know it's not a pure origin story because he's already told you that yeah what would be some ingredients that would get you excited like what could he tell you about characters that would be in this or styles or storylines he's adapting that would make you more of a believer in this project as a chapter one for his version of superman i don't think there's one particular storyline brian that calls my attention i'm more I, certainly aspects of villains that we have been saying brian for a long time why don't they use this guy why don't they use the, this guy we've always gone back to the lex luther guy what i hope to see is good casting for lex luther um, possible storylines leading to maybe Brainiac. I don't know. James Gunn being wacky. Mesoplex is not out of the question. I think is a good foe for Superman that allows us to mess with his mind and see how he reacts to different certain things that Mesoplex will put him in. I think Mesoplex is very interesting. Um, and it affords us the opportunity to see different sides of, uh, or see things that obviously aren't happening, but we don't know because we don't know if it's messed up, but it'll just, I think, <clears throat> especially with a young Superman, Brian, I think that idea works. So if he starts naming off villains like Brainiac, Mesoplex, who else? Dark side, but dark side is just no. too big right now. No, I think that that would make me less excited. Yeah, I think 
so you you've been on the the Mexiplex thing for a long time. That's that's definitely your your guy. And I think it's a little, I think Brainiac's the one that I think a commitment to do Brainiac finally, I think would be something that would get me excited. And I would want Lex to exist in this world, but I don't necessarily need him to be to the, be model the model main model. guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that would actually be, and I James Gunn has hinted at this. That would actually be one of the things that would get me excited. This idea that the world already exists. We trust you to know most of the major characters and we're just gonna keep it moving from there. I think if James Gunn makes an allusion to that, that like basically everyone you know and love from the Superman canon is here already. Like we accept that they're here. I think that would be a plus. I, given they shared as much, he shared as much as he did. I also think it's maybe a long shot. I think there's an outside chance you get the director named with this outside okay. chance. Part of the reason he would have given you the information he did, not just to head off the Henry Cavill controversy, but was because things were further along there than perhaps people realized. He he clearly had written more of that story than people knew. And so I wonder if you might get confirmation. I'm obviously rooting for Joe Kaczynski, director of Top Gun Maverick, but if you get a quality name, a name that gets people's attention, say, ooh, they're directing a Superman movie? That's an easy way to get people excited about your project. Let me pose this question. Suppose he's directing it. He's already said he's not, though. Okay, okay, okay. He's, he's committed to saying he's not. So I okay, think... Okay, okay. I, I feel safe in saying it's not him. I, I, I agree with you. I'd be concerned. But I don't think his role will allow him capacity to do both of those things. But so he is writing it though, right? He's already written it basically. That's what okay. it sounds like. He's written most of it or he's right. Yeah. He's pretty far along. So Brian, these are the little things that I'm looking forward to hoping to see in, in these films that this love, this relationship between him and Lois is the tension is there again. Who's the boss? Tony Danza, Angela, the tension is there. You know, they want each other, but they can't do it. Especially Superman. If you think about it, Brian, this guy is can hear a lot of stuff that's going on. How can you, when you listen to all the statistics, oh, every three seconds, every five seconds, this is happening. Or every, can you imagine Superman is listening to all this and he's chilling with Lois? It doesn't make sense. That's not what makes him Superman. That when he can't take it anymore because he feels so much, that's the that's the moment you're like, oh, you, you want to see that. Not immediately the way that Zack Snyder gave it to us. So I'm looking for her to be dating Lex Luthor, to be dating Bruce Wayne if he comes through. You know, I want to see that part. That they, they want each other, but they can't do it because of whatever. Yep. So I'm looking to see some hints of that. So, yeah. uh, so I don't know how much we'll get, but I do think we'll get incremental Superman information given what they've already given us. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Here's my number two that I, I would like to see, and I have a specific reason for it. And James Gunn has in a very cryptic way alluded to it. I would like to see a commitment to Green Lantern and Jon Stewart as Green Lantern as a movie franchise. I know the Ryan Reynolds thing bombed. But I think it is important for the DCU to go to space. They're clearly not going to do it with Superman. Young Superman is going to be mostly Earthbound. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But I think you need to open up the alien and the extraterrestrial frontier. And to me, the Green Lantern core and that world is the easiest way to do that. They had this TV series, which I don't think was going to be that successful. James Gunn had a cryptic response where he basically said, no, like we have not canceled or scrapped the idea of the Green Lantern Corps. He didn't say anything about the TV series, but I wonder if there's a couple of ideas that were in that writer's room that he's, he might be pulling out to then put into a future Green Lantern project. I would like to see them attack that angle and I think it's a character that can work. And I think it's a, an avenue of storytelling and just a different feel that can be successful if you put it in the right hands. So that's one of my like wish list things. Given how James Gunn, you know, he, he knows his comics. I'd love to see the question. 
I'd love to see that conspiracy theory guy putting together clues, figuring out um, that's your things. That are... That's your TV series. Yes. Very strange Sherlock Holmes series starring the question. I'm on board. Give it to me. And we're going to get a series. They're going to announce a series as part of this. And I don't yeah. think it's just going to be season two of Peacemaker. Something's coming on the TV side. That's an off the board one, but I think it's a great call. The question's yeah. awesome as a character. Yeah. And it's something that you can easily base around the movies. He's doing little things. He's doing the background stuff. He's figuring out things. And Batman is, it's just a good way to get people in the same world and in the, 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 the I guess, the, um, the background of what's going on. Also, question, this is also, if we're pulling in Justice League Unlimited, the thing I love about the question he has no powers. He has no chance. And he doesn't give up. <laughs> he challenges Superman like it's nothing. Like when he calls him out about the yeah. information he finds, he knows yeah. Superman can melt him down in a second. <laughs> and he doesn't care. I love that about the character. I also love, you know, Question and Huntress is a really interesting dynamic. It's an unusual dynamic between the two of them. That could also work if you put it in a series. So I'm on board with this. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I, I something offbeat is going to come. It's just a question of what character they choose. So I think that would be that would be a great call. Uh, my next one would be, you know, confirm the rumor that Jason Momoa is going to be Lobo. Confirm it. Yeah, it's yeah, just confirm it. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, a yeah. home run. Make the announcement he's transitioning. Make the commitment to a film with him as Lobo. I think that's that a, would that's a huge. Good. That's 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 a huge announcement for him. That's a money maker. Yeah. Everybody wins if he does that. My last request, I don't think it's impossible. This is my conspiracy theory. They announced that the Batverse and Matt Reeves are connected to the DCU. He's agreed to do it. I doubt it. And, no. and they don't need another Batman. That means Pattinson is going to be, he's, he's, he, he's going to show up alongside. I think... If I were James Gunn, man, for me, it sure it'll be dope. You put Pattinson, but I think that in the world of Pattinson and Batverse, there's just too much to discover. I'm okay. fine with the Batverse being what it is. Oh, so I think of it as a one-way ticket. They're not gonna mess with the Batverse going that way, but Matt Reeves and Pattinson agree that he will come the other way to stand. Like if they're doing a Justice League film in the future, or they're going to do World's Finest, he'll do it. It won't touch the world Matt Reeves is building. So like Superman won't go into Batman 2. But I just, I, I think that version of the character is set up perfectly to be the outsider I to the future Justice you. League, to be the reluctant I half member. I hear you, I hear you. But, but, I've said it once, and I'll say it again. The person to be the perfect representation of Batman from the <laughs> comics is Alan, Alan Richson. All right, I got you. Yo, I don't disagree with that from a physical standpoint. Yeah. If you want to go Batman, the look at the physique, look at the jaw, look at the Bruce Wayne. You can see Bruce. He's he's Bruce Wayne all over. You know what I'm saying? I actually and, think. And, he was, I, I actually think he would lose weight to do it, to be quite honest. Oh, yeah, He's yeah, so yeah, yeah. cute as Reacher. Yeah, I actually yeah. think he would drop like 25 pounds. Yeah, to do yeah, yeah. And, 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 he'll, and he'll do it. And he, the dude is 40 years old. So we got to put, put that in consideration. But I think he'll do it. I think he would be... He'd be the guy, man. I think he's the guy for it. Let's see if James Gunn sees the same thing or he hires somebody out to, um, you know, not well-known. I don't know a not well-known character works for this guy. They won't. Batman. I mean, obviously, they're not ready to cast a second Batman if that's what it's going to come down to. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but but there's nothing that says that Batman and Superman have to be the same age. I mean, I I, th I do think that they've lined it up in the sense that they could be contemporaries with Pattinson. But no, they could choose a route where Batman is five. Like it's the same thing with Wonder Woman. It's like that character is immortal. Basically, you could have them be at different stages of experience if you wanted to kind of play around with that. That's totally yeah. fine. Rather than give you like 12 different things like Marvel would, I think they're going to focus you on a few things to get you excited. They want to they want to highlight the bets they're making out of the gate. 
That's that's my thought. As well as not give you, uh, we got 10 years worth of movies and spinoffs ready for you like the other camp had. We don't want to give you false hope. We want to focus you on the most immediate thing right here and what we have an opportunity to do, which is these films, and we're going to tell you what we're going to do. We're not going to jump the gun. But, but Pablo, he had the guts to fail. <laughs> Listen, Brian, this is his way of saying I messed up. He is never going to say or oh, say this was a failure. He already, he already, he, in this response, in his video, he already admits that he messed up. And that, I mean, like, that. It, I got to give it up to him. He finds there is no negative bone in his body. Nothing negativity. He doesn't want to hear about it. Yeah. It's just it's just a, a road that he crossed. It didn't work out. He's moving on. But, but he does it in his way. I mean, it's The Rock's yeah. Instagram video, which he says it's more important to have the guts to fail. It's basically his way of admitting Black Adam was a loss and his power play for DC was a was a failure and he's basically out. But, you know, he, he doesn't really take ownership of that. And that's the problem. The universe has judged you. You asked it for a prize, and it told you no. You failed. And do you want to know why? Because of you. Yes, exactly, exactly. I hope, Ryan, that he moves forward and he moves differently with regards to what's best instead of what he wants. And working with other people to get to that that place. Black Black Adam was his no holds barred. More than 20 years later, rediscover the film that defined it. Yeah, Hulk Hogan movie star never really happened. For, for for those of you scoring at home, he might have peaked his he might have peaked his Thunderlips in uh, in cinema. In the flesh, baby. Dwayne Johnson's career arc is never going to change unless he's willing to be directed. You know, I mean, it, and Dave Batista just did a drive by on him, talking about his career. But the difference is, you know, yeah, Drax was his big break in some ways, but he worked with James Gunn. He's worked with Danny Villeneuve. He just was in Glass Whoa. Onion with Ryan Johnson. Johnson. He is looking to work with the best and most talented array of filmmakers he can, and he will take dramatic parts. He will take comic relief parts. He is exploring the studio space for his career. That is how you grow as an actor. Regardless of what The Rock says, he wants to be a star. He wants to be famous. He wants to be the top dude. He wants that feeling. Listen, when The Rock was at his height, he was commanding crowds to say his name and chanting his name. He was doing all that. Take a listen because they are chanting his name. He was never willing to do what Cruz and Arnold, like he was never willing to do what those guys did. He skipped that step. I mean, like Cruz now is his own machine, but go back to his IMDb from the nineties. He's like Paul Thomas Anderson, Steven Spielberg, you know, Stanley Kubrick, Tony Scott, Ridley Scott, like <laughs> Martin Scorsese, call her money. Tom Cruise worked with every legendary filmmaker there was Yeah, before he took over his own projects and became what The Rock wants, is, and wants to be now. That yeah. interim stage is critical to your development. And until The Rock gets that, even if he is 50, until he discovers that religion, he's never going to be what, what those stars became. And DC, uh, DCU is better for it. That read, it oh yeah. read, read the articles about him going behind people's backs, you know, going to Michael. Like, it is everything you imagined that Camp Rock would be to the studio. He was with regard to DC. There's no question that that is addition by subtraction. And yeah, there's some out there who say, oh, The Rock is a star. He's an A-lister. He shouldn't have to speak to subordinates. And it's like, dude, you're going in with, you know who I am attitude. That normally doesn't work. I don't care. A lot of people don't care about who you are. That's fine if you're going to do what Todd Phillips is doing. 
If you're going to make your own thing that's not going to touch anyone else's and you're going to deliver big hit after, you know, a big hit like Joker was, that's fine. But he was trying to have Black Adam be its own universe. And then he was trying to pull in the Justice League and all these shared characters. That doesn't work. You can't have both of those things. And Warner Brothers called him on it and showed him the door when the box office didn't come through. They said what you said, Brian. At the end of the day, we own them. You don't. Yeah. That's basically it. You can't say nothing after that. You cannot say nothing after that. What we got for him, again, like I said, Brian, he big trouble, little China. If that movie doesn't hit, Brian, it is over his career that career is over it, it, it may not be over over but it, he has to rebuild it because it's never going to be the same black adam has changed the trajectory of the rock's career in movies i would agree with that he ran headfirst into the genre and lost and like you're seeing more negativity thrown his way i think in the wake of that and the wake of this whole dc controversy and like henry cavill as we told you a pawn caught in the middle of this whole operation. Like he's taking flat for it. That's why he he's, putting up, he's putting up these posts about like guts to fail. He's but- walking in the forest, contemplating the world. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling, he, he was literally taking a walk and he was thinking about, you know what? Let me put something. That's what he did, yo. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. He's listen. He's reading. He's, he's feeling it. And uh, my only hope for him, man, is that he, um, Cause it's gonna get louder and louder, Brian. Especially when his movies don't start doing well, people are gonna start looking at his movies and his filmography, and dissecting it and calling it for a lot of it what it is. Yeah, Red One didn't make any consideration <laughs> for our top ten next year. I'll tell you that. We'll see, man. That is a that is a rough situation that he's in, but he'll survive as long as he puts out quality stuff, and it's just not. The Rock being The Rock, it's just, it's just, it's just not going to work anymore. Anything else, Brian? No, I mean, I'm excited to see how how Warner Brothers and James Gunn play this kind of stage one of the process. Like I said, I think that will then that will then set the stage for Comic Con, which I think will be a massive DC event. So yeah, I mean, this is this is even as we're waiting for Flash and Aquaman and these other projects that are coming through the pipeline. Like this is the focus, man. This is they're clearing the decks setting their course let's see how they do yeah yeah um but very exciting we have to have our conversation brian because the 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 scales are balancing um where mcu was like this now dcu and the tables have are almost evened out and now i think dcu is heading towards uh, a, a, a big reversal in terms of popularity when, when it comes to the MCU and DCU. Yeah, look, I mean, th- nothing is guaranteed, but the door is open. Pick your cliche. Door is open, blood's in the water. When you look at the box office last year for Marvel projects, there's clearly a combination of fatigue. There's dissatisfaction with any number of things you can pick from the stories they're telling, um, the VFX, Yes, the political messaging, if you if that's something that you care a lot about, like they, the door is open. They have Batman in a pretty good place. If they can get Superman in a pretty good place and they can get maybe one other thing on the board that people are ex- genuinely excited about, <sighs> you might have people that like, if you gave them you know, number one draft pick next five years who do you want you want dcu or do you want mcu like this would never have been a question for the last 10 12 years but you might at least think about it like if if marvel has a bad 2023 on the back of the last two years and they give you a you know a great director a spot on casting for superman and the hype starts building there and Batman 2 is what we think it is. There is a world where you're staring at the two side by side and saying, you know, after all that hate and all that chaos and all that controversy, I think DC might have more upside than Marvel. There's a chance. Definitely. 
Might be a remote chance, but there's a chance. And there was no chance of that a couple of years ago. I think because we don't, we know what's coming up for Marvel. We don't know for DCU. And I think whatever announcements that comes up within the next few weeks will be the talk of the town. Because all we'll know is names, possibly stories, who knows, but we may get cast. May, we'll get exciting with uh, uh, news without knowing nothing about um, the projects themselves or the storyline. I think this the excitement, the mere excitement for DCU is going to be greater. And I think comic when it comes down to Comic Con, Brian, I because again we know what's coming from Marvel. What are you going to show us from Marvel in in, in San Diego Comic Con coming up? We're going to cast about movies we've been waiting for forever. The issue with Marvel is we don't trust the execution as much as we used to. That's it. Right. If this was 2018 or 19, Marvel could have tell, told us anything and we'd be super excited because we know it would be good. Right yeah. now, we're not sure. It might be. Yeah. But we're not sure. That's yeah. why, you know, DC, yeah, there's a there's a window there. There's yeah. a window there. And it's like, as you've said many times before, it's like their characters in a vacuum are kind of the bigger characters. Like if you're hitting grand slams with Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. The Justice League, like that's huge, yo. That's that's bigger than Ooh. most of what Marvel has in the cow. That kind of is not all of it, but that kind of is. And that's the way. It, like when you're growing up, kids, we was time for Halloween. You went to the stores, like Superman, yeah, it was Spider Man on the Marvel yeah. side, but it was Superman, it was Batman, it was Wonder Woman. Yeah, it wasn't Iron Man. Yeah, I'll say this last thing before we sign off: if James Gunn is not able to pull this off. Zasloff is going to sell DC. I agree there's a chance of that. The timing of that would make sense. It's going to be a couple of years down the road, but that, yes. that could be yes. possible. Yes. But I'm going to continue saying this so that everybody knows that it was said on this show. Um, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. What do you guys hope for James Gunn to announce in the next few weeks or months about the future of the DCU? What characters are you uh, hoping that he makes announcements for uh, cast storylines, let us know in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.